Hello everyone. This tutorial is going to go over our next assignment, which is digital painting, animal coloring book page. And what you're going to do is you're going to look at the resources below and you're going to choose an animal that you are going to color in today. This link right here, how to color line art on Sumo Paint um, is a tutorial that I found on DeviantArt that I thought was pretty good. So you can check that out too. I'm going to choose the elephant and then you need to go to the more actions, open a new window, and this will give you the download button. So download it and you'll save it to your files into your Google Arts drive, your Google Arts folder. And then you're going to go to Sumo Paint. And what pops up, we're not going to need. So I'm going to just X out of it and we're going to open up the elephant picture. So you're going to go up to the options bar or the menu bar and you're going to go to file, open from my computer. I'm going to choose the elephant and there it is. So now first thing I'm going to do is I actually need to go to my layers panel. But because this is sort of hidden a little bit, if I click on the advertisement and close it, it allows me to see more of my layers because um, we are going to add a blank layer. So down in the bottom of the layer panel on the left is add a new layer. We're going to drag and drop this underneath background. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint on layer one. So I'm going to call it color and background will be line. And so on the line, we have this white area around it, which makes it so we can't see underneath. So we're going to need to change our blending mode. So with line selected, I'm going to go up to normal and I'm going to click on multiply. That's going to make all of the white area transparent so that we can see our color layer that is below. Now we're going to start to color. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do though is I actually want to select the elephant so that I can color within the elephant. For me, it just makes it a little bit easier. So in the tools, you have the magic wand tool. So just like in Photoshop, I'm going to click on the background. online. Oops, I'm going to unselect it. I'm going to go up to select, deselect. There it goes. So online layer, I'm going to grab the magic wand tool. Try this again. <laughs> I'm going to click on the background layer. And now it'll select around the elephant. I was on the color layer, so it selected the whole layer. So now I want to invert it. So I'm going to go up to select, invert. And now the elephant is selected. So I'm going to go back to my layers. I'm going to click on color. And now I'm going to start my painting. So the first thing I want to do is actually add a whole color to the elephant because he's going to be primarily a, a blue cone color. So I'm going to grab a color. So I'm going to come to my swatches, my color picker, and I'm going to look right here to see a color that I like. I'm going to choose one that's kind of fun. And I can also see it right here on the bottom of my tools. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start with the paint bucket tool. I'm going to click inside the elephant and it puts a solid color down for me. Now, what I'm going to do is grab the paintbrush and I'm going to paint in other areas that are just a solid color. So I'm going to make my window bigger. I'm going to come down to the zoom button. And I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to start to paint with the paintbrush, the eyes. So I'm going to come up to my options bar and I'm going to start with just 
up the circle brush. I might make it a little bit bigger. Or I can do the diameter here and change it. And then I'm going to come in. Whoops. And I don't want it to be blue. I want it to be white. So I'm going to select a white color. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to color. I'm going to try to stay within the black line. And you'll notice it stays under our lines. So, um, I'm going to come in, I'm going to do the cusps as well. And I'm just putting some solid colors. Control Z is undo. And I got to keep coming up here to sort of change the size, but. And then I would come through. And I'm going to go a little bit faster just so you can get started. Um, and then I'm going to do these solid areas. I'm going to grab pink and a larger brush. I'm going to come in. I'm going to do the ears. Yeah, let's do a little faded pink. That's cute. Whoops. I want the tusk. Control Z. Works out really well. And I'd go in on the ears. And paint them in. So at this point, I'm just laying down solid areas of color. Maybe I'll go in and do his mouth, the same kind of color. And then I can zoom back out. I go and do toenails and make all of those details. So once I have those sort of plain colors in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to lay down some shading. And when you're shading, you're going to want to choose tone that's a little bit darker and a tone that's a little bit lighter. But you can also use colors that aren't exactly the same. Um, like I might just do this lovely little light pink here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to opacity. I'm going to lower it because I'm now going to do some blending. I'm going to lower my opacity. And I'm going to lower the flow. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, instead of the circle, I'm going to choose that airbrush one, which is a really soft brush. And I might choose a larger size. And now I'm going to start adding the highlights in the shadows, right? So the lighter tone will allow me to, sh to shade. Right. Each time I click, it gets a little bit brighter. Um, I might choose now a little bit of a darker tone. Maybe I'll do a little bit of a purple. And I'll go in and I'll add the tone. Adding a variety of colors and not just being, say, pink or blue will allow more variation and it to be a little bit more interesting. So I'd go through. And I would add some of those tones. I'd probably make the pink of the tongue a little bit darker too, knowing that it's hidden. Right. And then I would do the same for the blue. I can grab the blue by dra grabbing the eyedropper on the tools. Or it's not looking like it's giving me that. Or I will just grab a little bit of a lighter color. And then I'd go in and I'd add some highlights. And then I would go through and I would add some shadows. 
as well. This brush is too small, so it's leaving um, sort of like a trail. I want it to be a little smoother on the head. Remember, wherever you chose your light source to come from. I'll move down to his belly. Remember that light source is coming from this side. And just like that sphere that you drew the other day, you would go through and you would add your values to it, right? And then I'd go back and I would choose something a little bit darker to add some shadows. Okay, and then that's all. Play around with getting comfortable with the brush, adding some layers of tones. Don't be afraid also in some of these highlight areas, sometimes to go in and add a little bit of a yellow. It can be really pretty. Or you could do like a dark green or other tones that can go into this as well to add it a little bit more dimension. And then when you're done, you'll save it and submit the assignment. And remember to save, it's file, save to my computer, name it your name. G in your grade and elephant or an animal. And then that's it. Okay, and don't forget to attach it to Google Classroom.